Hey fans of Biblical Genetics, this is Dr. C. I'm coming at you today from Bangor, Maine. I'm actually standing on top of Lake Pushaw, which is frozen solids, about a foot of ice underneath me and about six inches of snow on top of, of the ice. This is really, really cool. As we're um, getting ready for this event this weekend, they're like, hey Carter, we're going to be here on Saturday. Let's do something outside. I said, okay, what are we going to do? They said, let's go ice fishing. So back over that way is our little ice house. We drilled like six holes in the ice and we're all fishing, having a good time. Well, I haven't caught anything yet, but maybe I will. This is cool and amazing and fun. I've never been ice fishing before. It's a bucket list event. Um, but I'm here because I want to talk about something wintry, and that is sickness and disease. Winter is a time for people to get sick. Um, we've got a lot of viruses floating around uh, the, the, the population. In fact, I've already had the flu. I had the flu shot earlier in about October. And so I think that helped me not have it as bad as I could have it. But I know that this year they missed it. They didn't get quite the right strains into the vaccine, which happens every once in a while. But this is science. We're working on it. We're learning as we go. And it's not easy to protect against things like an influenza or even worse, a cold virus. I'm going to attempt in the next 10 minutes to flip your understanding of viruses on its head. Most people, when they say virus, they think bad. But I want you, when you think virus, to think good. Because the first point, I'm going to make three big points, but the first point, most viruses are beneficial. What? I thought viruses cause disease. No, most viruses do not. In fact, have you ever been swimming in the ocean? You've been swimming in a sea of bacteria. There are so many bacteria per liter in the water. It's actually kind of gross if you count it up. But there are more viruses than there are bacteria. What are the viruses doing? They're controlling the number of bacteria. Oh, you probably learned that you have more bacteria in and on your body than you have cells in your body. That's a lot of bacteria. But you know what? You have even more viruses than you have bacteria. What? What are the viruses doing? They're controlling the number of bacteria in your gut and they're controlling the species of bacteria. Oh, that's really cool. So what they're doing is, is regulating. Without those viruses, I don't know, we might actually be eaten from the inside out by the bacteria that we carry. Without viruses in the ocean, there might not be any fish. You might not want to even swim in the water. I don't know how bad it would be, but they are very important, very beneficial. Most viruses are good. Now, not all viruses, but most of them. That's point one. Point two, I want to um, make the case that we make viruses. In our genome, in our cells, we make all the parts the viruses make. We make protein shells, we make DNA, we make RNA, we have DNA and RNA uh, copying enzymes. And it is possible, in fact, some creationists have made the case, and for, at least for some cases, I think it's probably, probably a, a good way to think, in some cases, at least, the viruses that we see may have actually come from cellular parts. So as our cells are packaging things together in various ways, well, whoops, they package something that is exactly what a virus is. So maybe viruses came from the, the human genome rather than vice versa. Because there are a lot of what look like viruses inside our genome. Um, in fact, uh, something like a large percentage of our genome might be deactivated viruses that infected us, got stuck in our DNA, they say millions of years ago, I don't think so. Um, or the opposite, viruses could have escaped from the human genome. Because see, a lot of these, what we thought once were junk DNA, ancient viral infections, are actually really good for us. These things called retrotransposons, they um, jump around in the, in the genome, and in fact, their presence or absence can turn on and turn off various genes because a lot of times these retrotransposons that look like viruses have a DNA promoter in them. And if they're not there, that gene is not made. If they are there, that gene can be turned into protein. And we know in the mouse embryo, there's one class of retrotransposons. If you deactivate it, the mouse embryo will develop and then stop. Why? Because it needs the so-called junk DNA to manufacture essential proteins. Okay, so most viruses are good. We make all the parts of some viruses and the viruses that look like they might be ancient viral infections 
are actually tightly integrated into our genome, so I'm not so sure. I think actually they were created this way on purpose. Okay, third point. There are some bad viruses out there. There are a lot of bad viruses out there. They cause disease, they cause death, they're nasty, ugly things. Where do they come from? If God created this universe, would he have not have created a good universe? Would he, why would he have created a virus designed to kill people? Well, how about this for a thought? Most viruses, I believe, were created beneficial or at least, at worst, neutral in the species that they were created for, but when they jump to a different species, then all bets are off. Example, like this. Um, this lake that I'm standing on. In the summertime, people might come out here and swim or boat or do all sorts of, you know, water stuff. But there are ducks here and there are swans and geese. And anytime you have aquatic waterfowl, you have influenza viruses. All of the influenza viruses, not just H1N1, not just H2N5, you, if you keep up with the, the strains that are infect people. All the other possible ones are carried by these birds. And when they defecate in the water, and you go swimming in that water, ugh, you're swimming in a soup of influenza viruses. Yuck! But they don't make you sick. And they don't usually make the birds sick. In the evolutionary way of thinking, um, you know, they, they tend to think these things are bad, there's a war going on between the various species, and we gotta fight, 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 fight. And I think that actually precludes some scientists from figuring out the beneficial role these viruses might have in ducks and geese. I don't know, I don't think anyone's ever looked at it. But in general, they don't cause disease. However, when they jump to another species, that other species doesn't have the ability to regulate this virus properly and the virus tends to burn hot and fast and sometimes it burns out like Ebola. Thank, thank you Lord that Ebola, every time we've seen it, has burned out. And the last couple of times it took a lot of effort from a lot of epidemiologists and a lot of people working to keep this thing in check because we don't want it to get into a major city. That would be really, really bad because we don't control Ebola. Right now, there's a new virus in the world. Uh, it's a coronavirus. This is not a good thing. The amazing thing with new technology, we already have this thing sequenced. We have multiple sequences already from multiple patients already posted online in open access databases so any scientist can go and study this. This is really amazing. We've even looked at it under electron microscopes and we have a picture of it. So we know what this is and we are using all of our modern ways of, of dealing with diseases to tackle this and keep it down because we don't want it to kill a lot of people. But what is it? It's an escapee. It's a virus that jumped out of its original created uh, arena and now it's in a brand new field and the new field is called humans and we don't know how to control it. Our immune system doesn't deal with it very well. Most viruses that are bad are escapees. Some of them might be viruses that were created to work within us, but maybe there was a mutation that uh, helped it get over whatever the human, uh, uh, our cells were using to control it, and now all of a sudden it escapes there. So we can have internal escapees or what are called zoonotics. Z-O-O, -O, zoo, zoonotics. They are viruses that jump from one species to another. And we see that, I mean, Ebola, uh, we see that in, in this new coronavirus, even something like it's, not a, a, it's a bacterium, but um, something like tuberculosis. It looks like we got it from cows. Zoonotics are bad, but they're examples of things that have left their original created order. Okay, so there you go. My three big points on viruses. I hope I have changed your way of thinking. When you hear the word virus, think good. Don't think bad. When you hear the word disease, think bad, but also think of the corruption that occurred after God created this beautiful universe. A corruption, it has fallen into destruction and, and corrosion and erosion, and everything is slowly falling apart, and viruses that cause disease are an example of that, but the majority of viruses that don't cause disease are an example of the providential loving God who created everything originally to be very good. All right, there you have it, viruses. I hope you enjoyed that. That's all for today. 
I hope you're liking um, my, my video series or my podcast if you're listening online. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and a like and a share and talk about this with other people. There's a lot more coming. This is my 20th episode and I have a lot more on the, on the, on the front burner right now. I can't wait to talk about the next subject. But I'm not there yet because I've got other things to do, like go back to my ice house, which is now about a half a mile away. So have a wonderful time. I'll see you soon.